yes, uh, now it's time to watch our Bluetooth. Uh, I don't know if I introduce myself. So my name is Maciej, and I'm from Poland. And currently, I work for oh, for BBM. Oh yeah, I might have need to turn it on. Uh, yeah, so I work for BBM. I am an iOS engineer here, and I also run a blog called Swifting.io. Uh, you can look it up. We usually write about Swift, surprise, surprise, and recently about unit testing. And today uh, I would like to speak about somewhat new feature of WatchOS 4. However, it was introduced on WWDC last year. And uh, starting from WatchOS 4, uh, core Bluetooth framework is supported. So we can connect to Bluetooth peripher peripherals on our WatchOS application. And what we're going to do also during this talk is we're going to implement a simple application for watchOS. But before we do that, let's get back a few centuries. So this uh, bus relief uh, shows uh, Harald Gormson, which was a Denmark king. And he was uh, well known for two things. One of them is uh, he united Norway and Denmark, and it was somewhere around 945 to 985. And he was also famous for another feature. Uh, during one of the battles, he got injured, and his gun turned blue. And from uh, this uh, from this accident, he got a nickname. He was called Bluetooth. <laughs> and in uh, 1998. There was a special interest group created by five companies, IBM, Intel, Nokia, Toshiba, and Ericsson. And they wanted to work on a standard for wireless communications. And because they wanted to unite, to unify Bluetooth, uh, sorry, wireless transmission among uh, devices, they named it after Bluetooth, uh, after Harold Gormson Bluetooth. And the logo uh, of Bluetooth technology consists of two Nordic runes, B and T. And in 2011, I guess, there was another version of standard created, which was called Bluetooth Low Energy. And it had a few ideas in mind. First of them is, of course, it needed to support uh, low energy. It should work on very little power. Uh, it supported client-server architecture, so it was very simple. Some devices wanting data would just connect to uh, peripherals, to servers. They would return the data and they would disconnect, hence low energy. And the data is uh, wrapped up in services, is grouped in characteristics, and it's available in that way. On iOS, watchOS, and macOS, we can uh, connect via Bluetooth devices to Bluetooth devices by using core Bluetooth framework. And it works like that. If we wanted to have an application that uh, connects to other peripherals, we would have to uh, use object called CB Central Manager. And we would connect to Bluetooth devices that would be visible in our application as CB peripherals. If we wanted to write an application that acts as a peripheral, namely it would be visible as a server exposing some data, we'd have to use CB peripheral manager. And clients wanting to read data from our peripheral would be visible into in this application as CB centrals. Data is grouped into services and characteristics and all of the characteristics and services can be identified by universally unique identifiers. Um, uh, we have a few uh, classes, as I mentioned a while ago, in Kribble Framework. Today we'll be using uh, this set of classes to implement a simple application for WatchOS. So we'll, we'll use the CB Central Manager object, 
and we'll connect to another sub e peripheral uh, to read some values uh, for the bird. Uh, bird will have a name, a color in which we will show its appearance, and it will also have an alpha value because we want to make it a bit translucent. And the data will expose will be uh, exposed as UTF-8 encoded strings, and it will be just a string or a hexadecimal value describing a color or integer ranging from zero to one that will describe uh, how translucent the a bird should be. Uh, we need some UIDs to identify either our services or characteristics. So we'll have a simple enum bird service that will have UID of our service, which is this 128-bit uh, value. We'll also have UIDs for other characteristics, such as characteristic for color, name, alpha value. And some helper will need an array of characteristics. And we can uh, generate those UIDs on iOS or on macOS. On macOS, it can be done uh, by using UID Gen console tool, and on iOS or other uh, Apple environment platform, we can use NS UID class to generate a simple universal unique identifier, because this is what UID stands for, if I haven't mentioned that. We already have a peripheral application. So uh, we have a few controls to select a color from. Uh, we can type in a name for the bird, and we can play with the transparency of a bird. And the, this application will act as a CV peripheral, as a peripheral, actually. So it would have to advertise under services. In our case, it will, it will be bird service because our central application that we'll write for uh, watchOS uh, will have to uh, sense the wireless medium for packets sent out by this application. So peripheral needs to uh, advertise services. It will also have to respond to read requests for values of characteristics. And it will also notify our application if something changes in the system, so in the application. So whenever we select a different color on the interface, or we type in a different name, or we select a value from the slider, our watchOS application will be notified about the change. We're going to implement Bird Central for this up here. Uh, and it will have to scan for the service uh, that peripheral will advertise, we'll have to discover uh, characteristics of that particular service. We'll also have to read the value and subscribe for notifications upon a value update. And of course, at BBM, uh, so we do everything in TDD. But actually, uh, I already uh, implemented unit tests. So we have a suite, a suite of uh, failing tests. We're going to implement everything, and maybe for today we'll skip the refactoring part. OK, so let me do the coding part. Or maybe I can show you the application itself from the peripheral. So it has a simple interface. When I select something, you probably can notice that color of the application changes of the interface. I can type in the name, or I can play with the alpha value of this bird. OK. And now I'm going to switch to that place. So we have a project in which we have 29 
failing tests. Um, we have this bird service in which I have all the UUIDs needed uh, for the bird service and characteristics. And we also have this helper array of all the characteristics and it will be needed uh, while we're going uh, through the code. So I can run tests again so you will see that they actually are failing and I am not faking it. And let me introduce you to the project. It is available on GitHub and it uh, contains a few targets. So there's Bluetooth Vimo. This is application for uh, an iPhone. We also have peripheral target which is this application that we can use for uh, exposing the data. We also have a target for watch OS application. Uh, and we have Mac OS app, but hence my Mac book is a very old one. It doesn't support Bluetooth low energy. So this is why I'm going to show it to you by using uh, another phone. Uh, okay, so we have some common parts for uh, all the applications, all the targets. We have this bird service I described to you. We have a bird central, which uh, will be whole, which will be used by multiple targets. For example, this uh, we have we have another iOS application, uh, and bird central will be hosted on the iOS application and on the watchOS application. So here we have a simple interface for uh, the iOS application. It consists of a bird that has a name. It also has connection status and an image that we'll be playing with. We also have a watchOS application with a very similar interface. Hooray, hooray. Uh, and we have a set of tests. I'm not going through all of them. Uh, they are just for me to uh, go with the implementation and to make sure that I implemented everything correctly. So let's start. First of all, we need to import Core Bluetooth because this is our entry point to Bluetooth Flow Energy Communications. We have our Bird Central object, the, the one that will be reused by iOS application and WatchOS application. And this Bird Central object communicates with other parts of the application, such as View Controller or Interface Controller in case of WatchKit App. Uh, it will use delegate to say to the view controller or interface controller that something happened in the system, such as we discovered a new value, please update an interface. We use CV central manager to kick off Bluetooth communications. Uh, here there is a wrapper on CV central manager because I needed to write unit test, but basically this is a protocol that describes CV central manager and CV Central Manager confirms this protocol. And we have a set of uh, properties that we use to store values read from a peripheral, such as peripheral itself, services, service or characteristics. And they're also wrapped in terms of protocol all the interfaces described in, described in terms of protocol. Bird Central Delegate uh, is a protocol that needs to be implemented by everyone who wants to uh, use Bird Central. And it contains a simple method, central did perform action. And we have a few actions. We can connect to peripheral either successfully on or unsuccessfully. We can disconnect from peripheral, or we can read the value. And the value is, of course, name, alpha from 0 to 1 this time, or a color. So let's start. Uh, so there is one method that gets called whenever state of Bluetooth 
uh, interface changes in your system on your phone. It's called Central Manager Did Update State. And what we want to do at that time is we want to scan for services whenever interface is up. So we need to make sure that uh, our state of central manager is powered on. And whenever it is, we want to scan for bird service. So we use central manager to scan for peripheral with services and the services we are interested in is a UUID for our bird service and we can uh, just keep the options part so let me run unit test you will be able to see that some of them will become green then whenever our central manager uh, finds a peripheral we get notified with central manager to discover peripheral and we also can grab the advertisement da data so now it is 27, it was 29. Good progress. Uh, whenever peripheral is found, we need to stop scanning because we already found what we were looking for. So we need to call stop scan on central manager. Uh, we also want to store the peripheral. It's very important because if we don't store reference to peripheral, we won't get updated upon connection. So let's store peripheral in a property. And we also want to connect to this particular peripheral. So we use another method in central manager called connect peripheral. We should be good with uh, this method. Whenever our uh, connection request fails, we get notified about that fact with central manager did fail to connect method. So, uh, in that case, there's no need to uh, store the peripheral, we store it in this method. So we can just clear it by setting this peripheral to nil. We might want to start scanning wireless medium uh, again to find another peripherals that provide such services. So we can start scan again. Uh, and we also can notify our delegate that we failed to connect. <laughs> so, because our uh, delegate uh, probably will update user interface, for the case of this demo, we'll dispatch callbacks on the main thread asynchronously because this Bluetooth engine works on another thread. So, we just need to use our uh, central did perform action method and this time we will just uh, tell that our connection failed. Let's pay attention to our unit tests and let's focus on the successful connection. So this time what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, become peripherals delegate whenever we connect successfully because from now on now on we won't be using central manager in order to read values from the peripheral we'll invoke methods on uh, peripheral object itself and in order to catch the response we need to become a delegate of a peripheral so we need to become delegate of, uh, of a peripheral and we want to discover services of the peripheral and again, we are interested in uh, our bird service. Uh, and we can also notify our delegate of bird central that we successfully connected to a peripheral. tests again <coughs> whenever we disconnect from peripheral 
Uh, we also might want to do some cleanup. So let me create a reset method that will reset uh, all the properties used to for storing uh, some values. So let's cr clear the service itself. We can clear the peripheral. And there are also properties for all the characteristics. So let's clear them up as well. Uh, we also want to kick off scanning once again because we have just disconnected from a peripheral. Uh, and then we can notify our delegate again that we got disconnected. we successfully connect to a peripheral, oh, sorry, whenever we uh, discover services for a peripheral, we also get notified via uh, one of the CV peripheral delegate methods. And when we discover services, first let's check that our bird service is actually uh, in the discovered services. So let's use a guard statement. And peripheral contains a uh, an array of services, so you might want to filter uh, every characteristic characteristic that uh, doesn't have a UID. So it's not characteristic it's service. You might want to filter service that doesn't contain a UID we are interested in. And the UID we are interested in is, of course, a UID of our bird service. And whenever uh, we've got this filter array, array, we can grab the first item from it. If we have the service, we can store the service in our bird service protocol. Bird services of type CV service. <coughs> and what we want to do then is to discover all the characteristics of a service. Uh, we need again UIDs. So uh, let's grab a, an array of characteristics we're interested in of their UIDs and the service we're interested in. We need to also pass it to the method. Let's run test. Hopefully they will decrease. Whenever a characteristic is discovered, we can finally read its value and uh, subscribe for notifications. So let's make sure that we don't have any error. And we also uh, can set all characteristics to our properties. So now what we need to do is we need to iterate over all characteristics. And now we need to check the UID of a characteristic and we need to store them. So if a few, we have a few cases. We have name characteristic. Uh, we also have polar characteristic and alpha characteristic. So we can store them in properties. And of course, switch needs to be exhaustive. So, and default case will just return. 
and oops. We need to return, as I said, and uh, we also want to uh, subscribe for notifications. And we want to read value for this characteristic. Let's run unit tests. I'll just grab something from here. Oh no, it doesn't do it. Okay, it does. So whenever if we read a value from peripheral, peripheral did update value for characteristic gets called. And what we need to do now is uh, we need to first check again that there was no error. And then we need to uh, notify our delegate that we read the value. And we will use for that uh, bird central dot action dot value type. Oh, sorry, bird central dot value type. Mentioned uh, earlier. That can be a name, alpha, or color. So again, we uh, iterate. We have a switch statement, and based on the UID, we'll create an appropriate type of value. So in the first case, it's name value, and we have some computed properties that extract values. Why can't get in? So it extracts date binary data from a characteristic, it converts it to a string, or returns something. So we can reuse these. And in other cases, it will be color. Or alpha. And the alpha computed property uh, does some manipulation on the value that was from 0 to 100 and then converts it to CG float from 0 to 1. And what we need to do in this method is to uh, notify our delegate that something happened, which is a value was read. And we can use our value variable. Okay, let's run unit tests. And I think that's it for the implementation. Let's see if I forget about anything. And in the meantime, let me prepare a phone for the final installation of this application. Okay, a few more things. Uh, so whenever we connect to a peripheral, we need to become uh, peripherals delegate. Probably this will do. Uh, whenever we discover characteristic, we should store the service. If there is an error when we discover services, we should not uh, store anything. Okay, bear with me a while and hopefully the demo will go successfully.
Does anyone know a good joke? Because this may take a while. <laughs> okay, tests are green. So let's try installing uh, application on our watch. I mean, not on our, on my watch. And let's see if it will work. <laughs> okay, you can see the watch, and maybe in a while it will be installed. <laughs> Okay, I think it it takes a moment, so maybe I can show you a bit of tests if we have uh, a time. So we have Bird Central Tests class that contains all the test cases. We have our subject or system under test, which is Bird Central, and we create an instance of it in setup method. We also, we also have some spies that can intercept calls to this uh, central manager we interact with. A spy contains some uh, properties that we can assert after calling some method on our SUT. Uh, and it's usually toggled from method not called to method called. And to be honest, writing tests in Swift is really difficult. Because we need to create all those uh, spies or mocks by ourselves. Okay, I think it should be running by now, or almost. Question couldn't be completed. Let me see if the application is there. It's installed. Oh, but I need to trust the application. Okay, do they trust it? Maybe it will run. Let's test it in field. Uh, so I have this phone over here. Oh, maybe I could show it there. Now I will start advertising services. And if everything will be done properly, this should connect and actually it tells that it is connected and we have a bird and we can change its color play with its transparency and we can also set a name for it so let's uh, oops, let's call this one James Bond uh, I don't know if it's visible but it should have changed James Bond mm -hmm. nice. Okay, that was difficult. So, uh, let me wrap up. Quick recap. Uh, starting from WatchOS 4, we're able to write uh, applications that, that connect to peripherals, and only central role is supported on WatchOS. Uh, we, I wrote some unit tests that helped me uh, implement the desired behavior of our application. The code of Bird Central, the class that we created, is portable to iOS, watchOS, macOS, and tvOS, namely all the platforms that support Core Bluetooth Framework. Code is available online, and I think that's it. Thanks. Are there any questions? Good, because I'm extremely tired. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, just uh, talk to me after the event. Uh, okay, when is Melvin here? So, uh, Jay, you can ask the question. Huh? Okay. So, the winner will win the, this book. But you also need to post a photo later. <laughs> <laughs> so, this
book. So you okay. can ask the question. Okay. So uh, raise your hand and you will get your answer. Good. So the best answer wins. And the first person to give the best answer. Uh, okay. Quiz. Uh, how can you create a universally unique identifier on macOS? Please specify a tool that can be used. And on iOS, a class framework will do. CBUID iOS. Uh, but this is not the simplest way to create a universally unique identifier on iOS. Ty, come on, if you know, just speak up. Win a book on iOS animations. Do you see the characteristics of Rethics? No. There is a really simple way of creating it. And actually, I mentioned it during uh, this slide. Oops, sorry, where is this? Here. So there is something called CBUID. But this just creates an instance of CBUID object. But what we want to do is we want to generate this string that we can re that we could reuse in our application. You mentioned something about NCUID. Yeah, so this is on iOS. Do you also remember how to create a UUID on Mac OS? There was some I mentioned, I don't remember. Code gen? Code gen? Not code no, no, no. gen. UUID gen. UUID gen. Exactly. Okay, Dom, you don't need this book, so and the book goes to this gentleman over there because he mentioned then as UID first. Bravo. Uh, you can collect the book from me. Okay, you take a photo. Good, and I think that's it. Thank you very much.